Good day everyone, this is Chris with The Ancient Scholar. I hope you all are doing well today. And uh, what I'm going to be doing now is a series of videos talking about uh, the uh, National Registry of Emergency Medical Technicians Cognitive Examination. Uh, and this will be the cognitive examination that covers the uh, new um, uh, level of EMS provider that has come out of the uh, the um, National Scope of Practice Guidelines. It's actually been in the pipeline for some years now and it's just now coming to fruition. Uh, so as you, you some of you know the intermediate, the EMT intermediate, um, at least at the national level, has now being that that name, if you will, is being phased out and we're going to the advanced EMT. Um, prior to this uh, we've had uh, two national levels of EMT intermediate, an EMT I-85 based on the intermediate uh, 1985 curriculum which was uh, essentially a basic EMT that had a little bit of add-on training, if you will. That's actually uh, what I have been for some years now is the Intermediate 85. And basically, the training focused around um, talking a little bit about medical terminology, a little bit about patient, a little bit more about patient assessment, um, intravenous therapy, and um, uh, some airway management techniques that are sometimes not covered in basic or, or we'll call EMT classes, um, which actually a lot of EMT courses now um, cover things like superglottic airways. Uh, but uh, when I first went through, um, the, the I-85 curriculum was really designed around what they thought was going to be um, some of the core trauma management modalities, which has subsequently changed a little bit. Uh, now in, in, in modern times, but uh, that was the 85 curricula. There was the uh, 1999 curriculum intermediate, or the I-99, which is a bit more advanced and uh, covered things like intratracheal innovation, cardiac monitoring, and um, the ability to administer uh, many uh, different types of medications. Um, and now with the new scope of practice, they, they, they the Department of Transportation, National Registry, uh, obviously all of this is derived from the Department of Transportation um, and National Scope of Practice Guidelines, which have replaced the uh, national uh, curriculum uh, for e emergency medical services uh, professionals or EMS professionals. Uh, really, they're, they're trying, to, to, trying to get rid of all the variability because you have so many different types of this intermediate EMT, you know, this EMT that's somewhere between a basic EMT and a paramedic, um, and so they decided to kind of um, merge the 85 and 99, if you will, and, and out comes kind of this kind of hybrid provider that can do a little more medication-wise in an I-85 and not as much um, invasive stuff as an I-99, and it's, um, it's kind of the nature of EMS. It's just a uh, trying to get everybody on the same track, if you will, has been really tough for EMS, lots of barriers and and so on and so forth, and I don't really want to talk about those so much, at least in this video, I want to talk about um, those of you that are making this transition, or perhaps you are um, taking an advanced EMT course or getting, getting ready to graduate and looking at having to take the cognitive exam. So this first video, I just want to focus on what the cognitive examination is. And what it is, it is a computer-based test. Okay, when you finish, you successfully uh, complete your advanced EMT course, a state-approved AEMT course. You complete it. Uh, typically, you'll do the National Registry psychomotor um, test first, which involves going through all the skill stations. There are about nine, uh, soon to be ten, for the AEMT, and perhaps that's something I can talk about later. But you know, once you complete your course, you get your course completion certificate. Um, you send the, the necessary information into the National Registry. Uh, you should have a username and password on all that set up. The National Registry will then clear you to uh, take the exam. Um, if you are an, an I-85 like me making the transition to AEMT, um, you will have to send uh, documentation that you have gone through an approved transition course, a state approved transition course, and that, and that, and that course covered the the core modalities and, and knowledge gaps um, in there and uh, it, you send those in instead of a, a course completion certificate 
But um, either way, it uh, doesn't matter if you're uh, tra making a transition or if you are a newly minted advanced EMT, you still have to take the um, cognitive examination. Send the information in, the national reg and then pay money. Um, I believe it's $110 uh, for initial. Um, if you're making a transition like myself or you're having to do a retake, I believe it's $70 for retake. You can verify that information on the... Uh, the National Registry website, uh, www.nremt.org, O-R-G. Um, so, uh, fair enough. So let's talk about what happens then. Well, what happens then is National Registry then, once they get everything they need and they're satisfied, you go to your profile on the NRMT website and it will it'll confirm that you've, you've met the requirements to take the test and it will give you a number a confirmation number and a link will pop up to Pearson View. Pearson View is the company that um, administers uh, the testing for National Registry. There are Pearson View centers located all, all uh, many cities around the country. You go to the Pearson View website, you'll set up an account. It's it'll be based on uh, you know your username and password from your National Registry account. So it's pretty simple there. You set up your account. You click on find a, a test center within your area. You type in you know your city, um, your zip code, and, and um, it'll tell you what test centers are you know around your area. I had to drive; it's about 110 miles away from from where I live. Um, some closer, some further away. You know, depending how rural or uh, metro uh, you are, um, you may or may not have to commute to get to a Pearson View test site. You go to that specific test site, you go to the online calendar, you select the date and the time you wish to take the exam, you select that, you get some information from Pearson View, print all of that out, and then uh, you need to make sure that you have two solid forms of ID. You want a photograph ID and you need to have two, at least two forms of official ID that have your signature. Okay, uh, what I did just to be safe is I brought my driver's license in, I brought my passport, I brought my social security card. Um, my driver's license and social security card, of course, had, uh, or my driver's license and um, my, um, yeah, my, my social security card had my signature, and then I had the passport kind of as a backup. So I had two solid forms of photo ID. Um, that's what I'd suggest. There are lots of other ways you can do, do that, and it'll tell you what you need to do in the letter. Um, show up to the test site. Um, if you don't know where it is, I would suggest showing up early at least an hour early to reconnoiter, make sure you're where you're supposed to be, and in the event that you have any issues and if you have to commute, you want to give yourself a nice big buffer so you're not late. If you are late, there is a chance that they will cancel you, you'll be done, um, you'll have to reschedule the exam, and you'll have to pay all the money over again to take the exam. So uh, you definitely um, don't want to be late. Okay. So let's talk about the structure of the exam. The structure of the exam is a little different from the paramedic exam. And, um, the registry is known to have what's known as a computer adaptive test, or a CAT, which I initially thought that the AMT exam was, but it is not a computer adaptive test. A computer adaptive test basically um, gives you different questions of, of different... Um, uh, some are easy, some are hard, and it, it figures out exactly where your level of competency is. And if you're you're either highly incompetent or highly competent, you can get through a computer adaptive test very quickly. Um, once it decides, um, and it's it's statistical. Okay, it's it's a uh, 99.5. It, obviously, it's some standard deviations in there, but it, it's it's a statistical process that it uses to figure out whether you're not whether you are or not are not competent. Currently the AEMT exam is not a computer adaptive test. What does that mean? That means you're going to have to take the entire exam, the exam in its entirety. And what I mean by that is a computer adaptive test can vary. You know, some people get 70 questions, some people get 100. It just depends on the person. Um, the current AEMT exam is a flat 135 questions. Okay, you have to do every question and um, you will have two hours, 15 minutes. That is 135 minutes. You have 135 minutes, 135 questions. It gives you about a minute a question. Uh, questions um, are computer-based. 
It is a computer-based uh, test, and it will be A, B, C, or D answers, and I'll probably talk a little bit more about the structure of the exam in subsequent videos. Uh, mind you, I will not be giving out exact answers and exact questions because, you know, ethically um, and probably legally, I'm sure, um, actually you have to sign um, some waivers about that, but ethically and legally, there are definitely some problems uh, with me going online and giving out answers um, and, and specific questions. Uh, that would be uh, potentially career-ending uh, for me to do something um, as ethically dubious as that, but I will go ahead and talk about the content areas and maybe give some suggestions as about what you can study. Again, there's probably a huge bank of questions, thousands of questions, and you know every test is going to be a little different. Um, but I'll tell you about my experiences. This is 135 questions. You have 135 minutes to do it. The um, AEMT exam is broken into different sections. You have airway, respiratory, and ventilation. 17 to 21 percent of the questions will be in that category. You have cardiology and resuscitation. 16 to 20 percent of the questions will be from that. You have trauma. 19 to 23 percent. You have medical obstetrics and gynecology, which is 26 to 30 percent, and then EMS operations. 12 to 16 percent of the questions. 85% um, of the exam overall will be adult uh, content, and I believe about 15% of the exam overall will be uh, pediatric content. So that's kind of the general breakdown. Um, so what happens? You get to the test center, you give them your information, they get your ID, they'll either take a fingerprint or a palm print, um, get you checked in, you'll throw all your stuff in a locker, you can't have anything on you. You know, other than your clothes, uh, they'll give you either scratch paper, dry erase board, or, you know, something for notes. You go to a computer, um, set up, start taking the exam. Um, you are allowed to take breaks. You raise your hand, let them know that you need to take a break. You'll leave. The timer will not stop, however, so you are timed even if you take a break. Um, again, you know, you have about a minute of question. Doesn't seem like a whole lot of time, but statistically speaking. Uh, what we find people actually hardly ever of only about less less than one percent of people that take the national registry exam actually run out of time so really what happens is people get in there and they rush through um, that exam I was done in a little under an hour um, however the downside of that is if you don't read the question and really have a good understanding of what that question is asking you could potentially get it wrong um, so I would say, look, take your time, you know, take at least a good 30 seconds to read the question and figure out exactly what it's asking. And that's half the battle, in a lot of cases, is just understanding what, what are they really asking me here? What's going on? And once you realize what they're really asking, then you can look at the answers and um, you'll have higher success of getting through the, the test. Okay, guys, I think I'm going to cut it off here, and uh, we will see you on the uh, next couple of videos where I kind of uh, break down my experiences. Again, it, it's got to be spoiler-free, so to speak, um, because ethically and legally I can't um, discuss actual exam questions. Okay, guys, as always, thanks for hanging in there.